Happy Feast Day of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the Catholic Church, today commemorates and celebrates the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We believe that her parents' names were St. Joachim, her father, and St. Anna, or St. Anne, her mother. And today I'm going to read the first few chapters from the Proto-Gospel, or the Proto-Evangelium of St. James. It's an apocryphal work. It was actually condemned in 405 by Pope Innocent I as not being sacred scripture. So we are reading today an apocryphal document. Therefore, we should not bank on it and see it as sacred scripture, sacred tradition. That being said, this document dates to the mid-100s, the second century, and it is one of the oldest Christian texts, Christian documents outside the Bible. Why is it important? It gives us the names of the parents of the Virgin Mary, Joachim and Anna. It affirms the perpetual virginity of Mary. It teaches that Mary was a virgin before, during, and after the birth of Jesus Christ. It also teaches that she was dedicated in the temple as a young girl at the age of three, and many other things that we know to be true about the Blessed Virgin Mary, sacred traditions, are preserved in this document. Why is it not sacred scripture? Well, it most likely was not written by James. And there's one detail in the book, depending on the manuscript, that is sketchy, and that is this. It is not clear, depending on which manuscript you're reading, whether the conception of the Virgin Mary in the womb of Anna happened with Joachim's help or not. Clearly, we Catholics believe that Mary had a real father and a real mother, and they both gave their uh, biological the word, input for her immaculate conception. So that's the main reason why this book is... Um, is not accepted, and of course it's not scripture. That being said, I will read the opening chapters because I think it's it's important to see how er, the earliest Christians in the 100s already had a deep love for the Virgin Mary and already realized that her conception, her birth, her, nati her uh, childhood, all these things were miraculous and filled with grace. So if you're not a Catholic, Listen to what I'm about to read and realize this is the way that Christians in the 100s, some people date this to the year 150 AD, this is how they understood the Blessed Virgin Mary. Before I begin, I will uh, lead us in praying the Hail Mary, and we will do that in Latin, and then I'll do the reading. Oremos nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et et ora mortis nostre. Amen. Sancta Maria, ora pro nobis, in nomine Patris, Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, here's the reading. Opening it up. This is from the Proto-Gospel, or in Latin, Proto-Evangelium, which comes from the Greek, Proto-Evangelion, of James. And it begins with the account of her father, St. Joachim. Chapter 1. In the histories of the twelve tribes of Israel, Joachim was a very rich man, and he doubled the gifts he offered to the Lord, saying to himself, one is from my surplus for all the people, and the other is to the Lord God for forgiveness to atone for me. Now the great day of the Lord was approaching, and the people of Israel were offering their gifts. But Rubel stood before him and said, It is not right for you to offer your gifts first, since you have not had a child in Israel. And Joachim was very grieved and went to the history of the twelve tribes of the people of Israel, saying to himself, I'll look into the history of the twelve tribes of Israel to see whether I am the only one who hasn't had a child in Israel. And he searched, 
And he found that all the just people in Israel had raised children. And he remembered that in the last days of the patriarch Abraham, the Lord God gave him a son, Isaac. And Joachim was very grieved and didn't go to his wife, but gave himself to the wilderness and pitched his tent there. And Joachim fasted forty days and forty nights, saying to himself, I will not go down for food or drink until the Lord my God considers me. Prayer will be my food and drink. Now his wife, Anna, mourned and lamented for two reasons. She said, I lament that I am a widow and that I don't have a child. Now the great day of the Lord was approaching, and her servant, Juthine, said to her, How long are you going to humiliate your soul? Look, the great day of the Lord is approached, and it's not right for you to grieve. But take this headband, which the leader of the workplace gave me. It's not right for me to wear it, since I am your servant, and it has a royal mark. And Anna said, Get away from me. I won't do this. The Lord God has greatly humiliated me. Maybe a trickster gave this to you, and you've come to get me to share in your sin. And Juthine, the servant, said, Why should I curse you, since you haven't heard my voice? The Lord God has made your womb infertile to give you no fruit in Israel. And Anna was very grieved, and removed her garment of mourning, washed her head, and put on her wedding garment. And at about the ninth hour, she went down into her garden to walk around. She saw a laurel tree and sat down under it. And after resting, she petitioned the Lord. She said, God of my ancestors, bless me and hear my prayer as you blessed our mother Sarah and gave her a son, Isaac. Chapter 3 Anna looked intently to heaven and saw a nest of sparrows in the laurel tree. And Anna lamented, saying to herself, Woe is me! Who gave birth to me? What womb bore me? I was born as a curse before the people of Israel and have been despised. They've mocked me and banished me from the temple of the Lord my God. Woe is me! What am I like? I'm not like the birds of heaven, because even the birds of heaven are fruitful before you, O Lord. Woe is me! What am I like? I am not like the animals, because even the animals are fruitful before you, O Lord. Woe is me! Who am I like? I am not like the wild beasts of the earth, because even the wild beasts of the earth are fruitful before you, Lord. Woe is me, who am I like? I am not like these waters, because even these waters are serene yet churn, and their fish bless you, O Lord. Woe is me, what am I like? I am not like this earth, because the earth produces her fruits when it is time, and blesses you, O Lord. Chapter 4 And behold, an angel of the Lord stood nearby and said to her, Anna, Anna, the Lord has heard your prayer. You'll conceive and give birth, and your offspring will be spoken of throughout the whole world. And Anna said, As the Lord God lives, whether I give birth to a boy or a girl, I'll bring it as a gift to the Lord my God, and it will minister to him all the days of its life. And behold, two angels came, saying to her, Look, Joachim, your husband, is coming with his flocks. For an angel of the Lord hath gone down to Joachim, saying, Joachim, Joachim, the Lord has heard your prayer. Go down from here. Look, your wife, Anna, has conceived in her womb. And immediately Joachim went down and called the shepherds, saying to them, Bring here to me ten lambs without spot or blemish, and the ten lambs will be for the Lord God. And bring me twelve tender calves for the priests and the elders, and a hundred male goats for all the people. And behold, Joachim came with his flocks, and Anna stood at the gate. And she saw Joachim coming with his flocks, and immediately ran, and flung herself around his neck, saying, Now I know the Lord God has greatly blessed me, for behold, the widow is no longer a widow, and look, the one without a child in her womb has conceived. And Joachim rested for the first day in his house. Chapter 5 on the next day, he was offering his gifts, saying to himself, If the Lord God is reconciled to me, the plate worn by the priest will make it clear to me. And Joachim offered his gifts and paid attention to the priest's plate as he went up to the altar of the Lord. 
and he didn't see sin in the plate. And Joachim said, Now I know that the Lord God has been reconciled to me and has sent all my sins away from me. And he went down to the temple of the Lord justified and went into his house. And about six months were completed, and the seventh month she gave birth. And Anna said to her midwife, What is it? And the midwife said, It is a girl. And Anna said, My soul is magnified this day. And she laid down her child. And when her days were completed, Anna cleansed her menstrual flow, and she gave her breast to the child and gave her the name Mary. Chapter 6. And day by day the child grew stronger. When she was six months old, her mother stood her on the ground to test whether she could stand. And walking seven steps, she came to her mother's breast. And her mother caught her up, saying, I, as the Lord my God lives, you won't walk on this ground again until I bring you into the temple of the Lord. And she made a sanctuary in her bedroom and didn't allow anything sacrilegious or impure to pass through it. And she called the pure daughters of the Hebrews and they played with her. And when the child grew to be a year old, Joachim made a great feast and called the chief priests and the priests and the scribes and the elders and all the people of Israel. And Joachim brought the child to the priest, and they blessed her, saying, God of our ancestors, bless this child and give her a name that will be spoken forever among all the generations. And all the people said, So be it. Amen. And they brought her to the chief priest, and they blessed her, saying, Most high God, look upon this child and bless her with a final blessing which can't be surpassed. And her mother took her up to the sanctuary of her bedroom and gave her the breast of the child. And Anna made a song to the Lord, saying, I'll sing a holy song to the Lord my God, because God has visited me and has removed the criticism of my enemies. And the Lord God has given me fruit of God's justice, singular yet manifold before God. Who will report to Rubel's people that Anna nurses a child? Listen, listen, twelve tribes of Israel, Anna nurses a child. And Anna rested in the sanctuary of her bedroom, and she went and ministered to them. When dinner was finished, they went down rejoicing and glorifying the God of Israel. Chapter 7 And she cared for her child through the months. When she was two years old, Joachim said, Let us take her to the temple of the Lord, so that we may keep the promise we made, so that the Lord won't be angry with us and find our gift unacceptable. But Anna said, Let's wait until her third year so that she won't seek her father or mother. And Joachim said, Let us wait. And the child became three years old, and Joachim said, Let's call the pure daughters of Israel, and let them take their lamps, and let them be lit, so that the child won't turn back, and her heart won't be drawn away from the temple of the Lord. And they did so until they went up to the temple of the Lord. And the priest welcomed her, kissed her, and said, The Lord has magnified your name among all the generations. Through you, the Lord will, re will reveal his redemption of the people of Israel in the last days. And he sat her down on the third step of the altar, and the Lord poured grace upon her, and she danced on her feet, and all the house of Israel loved her. Chapter 8. And her parents went down, marveling and praising and glorifying the Lord God that the child hadn't turned back. And Mary was in the temple of the Lord. She was nurtured like a dove and received food from the hand of an angel. And when she became twelve years old, there was a council of the priests, saying, Look, Mary has been in the temple of the Lord twelve years. What should we do about her so that she won't pollute the sanctuary of the Lord our God? And they said to the chief priest, You stand at the altar of the Lord. Go in and pray about her. And if the Lord God reveals anything to you, we'll do it. And the chief priest went in, taking the robe with the twelve bells into the Holy of Holies, and prayed about her. And look, an angel of the Lord stood by, saying, Zechariah, Zechariah, go out and assemble the widowers of the people, and let them each bear a staff. And whomsoever the Lord God points out with a sign, she'll be his wife. And the heralds went down through the whole surrounding area of Judea and sounded the trumpet of the Lord, and behold, all the men rushed in. And Joseph threw down his axe and went to their meeting. 
And when they had all gathered, they went to the priest with their staffs. And having taken all their staffs, he went into the temple and prayed. And when he had finished the prayer, he took the staffs, went out, and gave them back. But there wasn't a sign among them. And Joseph took his staff last. And behold, a dove went from the staff and flew upon Joseph's head. And the priest said to Joseph, You've been chosen to welcome the virgin of the Lord into your own care. But Joseph refused, saying, I have sons and I am an old man, but she's young. I won't be a laughingstock amongst the people of Israel. And the priest said, Joseph, fear the Lord your God, and remember what God did to Dathan, Abaron, and Kore, how the earth opened and swallowed them all because of their rebellion. And now fear, Joseph, so that these things won't happen in your house. And being afraid, Joseph welcomed her into his care and said to her, Mary, I have taken you from the temple of the Lord, and now I bring you to my house. I'm going away to build houses, but I'll come back to you. The Lord will protect you. I'll stop there. That's getting us closer to the Annunciation. So this is a reading. I read the first nine chapters of the Proto-Evangelium of James, which recounts the conception, the nativity, and the early life of Mary. A few observations. First off, um, both Joachim and Anne are persecuted and mocked by their peers. Now, I mentioned in the intro that one of the reasons why this book was um, warned about and was not included in sacred scripture is it's ambiguous about the conception of our lady, and it depends on the manuscript. However, as I was reading, it's pretty clear she conceives in the, I think it was the sixth or seventh month, and Joachim had been away for 40 days. I'm sorry, she the baby's born six or seven months after their meeting, and Joachim had been away fasting for 40 days. So uh, it could be in point of fact that there was a, a procreation uh, according to nature there. But um, it is ambiguous there, and it's been problematic for people. Um, Mary is born. Uh, first of all, an angel heralds her birth. Um, she's born. She's celebrated and makes a, a nursery for Our Lady that she calls a sanctuary and makes sure that nothing unholy, nothing unkosher ever enters into that room. So it's somewhat like a holy of holies. Um, and then when she's three years old, they dedicate and offer Mary as a virgin in the temple. And she lives in the temple from age three to 12. Then when she reaches the age of becoming older, they're worried about being, her being uh, her defiling the temple. Uh, that has to do, of course, uh, with the coming of age of a young lady. So they have to find a man for her. And that brings about the miracle of the staffs. Joseph's staff, well, the Holy Spirit comes upon Joseph and his staff buds, and that shows he's going to be the caretaker. If you've ever listened to my podcast, you know I advocate a young Joseph theory. The uh, proto-gospel of James advocates an old Joseph theory, so I think that that's wrong. Clearly, I don't think that this document is infallible, um, It is that it's scripture, um, or that everything is right about it. But I do think it's interesting, as I said in the intro, to see how early Christians— maybe as early as 150 AD, how early they appreciated and understood that not only was the conception and birth of Christ miraculous, of course, Christ had no human father. He is consubstantial with God the Father, and he's conceived by the Holy Ghost. But they also perceived that Mary's conception, her birth, and her early life were also miraculous and special. And so today, September 8th, we celebrate the birthday of the Virgin Mary. Here at the Marshall Home, we will have a white cake with white icing, signifying Our Lady is immaculate and white and pure and sinless on the inside. And on the outside, we usually put a statue on top. Maybe I'll post a picture here on, on YouTube or on Instagram uh, of that cake. And uh, we celebrate a birthday party. December 25th is the birthday of our Lord Jesus. September 8th is the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We only celebrate three birthdays in the calendar. The birth of Christ, because he is sinless. He's a saint at his birth. The birth of Mary, she's immaculately conceived. She is sinless at her birth. And the birth of who? 
John the Baptist in June. Why? Because John the Baptist was sanctified, justified, and regenerated in the womb by the Holy Spirit at the visitation of the Blessed Virgin to St. Elizabeth, his mother. And so while he was not conceived without sin, he was born without sin. He was a saint on the day of his birth. And so those are the three birthdays that we celebrate as Catholics. John the Baptist, Our Lady the Virgin Mary, and our Lord and Savior, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. So, happy feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I will be back later this evening in a few hours with my two uh, youngest daughters, and we will be giving away the two heirloom quality, gorgeous rosaries from Seraphim Heirloom Rosaries. Here's a picture of them. Uh, that drawing will be, uh, I believe I have it 7 p.m. Central Time. And uh, a man will live, win the black one and a lady will win the white one. And if you're a supporter at patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall, you're in that drawing. Also, if you are a, one of my students at newsaintthomas.com, New St. Thomas Institute, either place, you are in the giveaway. So you have a chance to win either one of those rosaries. So um, join us live and find out if you win and pray the rosary every single day. Happy feast day. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. See you in a few hours.